cutting-edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. These doctoral students at Leuven University in Belgium are shedding light on one of history's mysteries. The university is a member of the Epoch Network, whose aim is to improve technology in order to preserve our cultural heritage. Using a dome scanner, they're creating a digital image of a cuneiform tablet from the 4th millennium BC. The process can require up to 260 pictures to create a virtual 3D image that can be manipulated by researchers as if they had the real object in their hands. If you have those surface properties, you actually have condensed all this information into a very small set of data. Using that data, you can then relight the, the virtual cuneiform tablet. You can have a, a different light put on it. You can actually try to remove the texture from it, um, but also have it automatically detect the wedges, for example, in the cuneiform. All these things you can do because you have now the surface information. In Haarlem in the Netherlands, Ewald Sanders, an historian and journalist, also employs digitization. He's in the process of creating his own digital library. Separating the pages from the book's binding, he scans them in using a high-speed scanner. So far, he's created a database of one and a half million pages. What once took days to research, now takes minutes. In the old days I had to go to the library all the way to Amsterdam which is about 20 minutes for me. Go there, sit there maybe all day for weeks on end sometimes and do research and I can do most of this behind my desk. Ewald Sanders and Leuven University are both facets of a great enterprise. The creation of a European digital library in which our cultural heritage is accessible to everyone preserved forever. The National Library of the Netherlands is in the process of digitizing its entire collection, 30 million items. Its website already allows access to books, manuscripts, photographs and letters, many of which are locked away in vaults. The library is currently digitizing Dutch parliamentary papers. The collection, dating from 1814, numbers two and a half million papers. While these books are not the only copies, digitization requires the parliamentary papers which they contain to be separated from their bindings. Another of the library's projects is to digitize its collection of newspapers. There are eight million pages dating from 1618, representing an invaluable source of eyewitness history. The newspapers are stored in a vault beneath the main library building. Astrid Verhausen is in charge of the project. There are two main reasons why we are digitizing. First of all, we want to make our collection as accessible as possible for uh, scientists and the broad public. That's the first reason. The second reason is that a uh, lot of our books and magazines and journals and newspapers are falling apart and we have to digitize them, otherwise they will be lost for future generations. The National Library of the Netherlands has also digitized part of its rare collection, articles that are seldom seen by the general public. To make it accessible for everyone, a book like this is digitized. It is recently uh, restored, and when it was, was out of the binding, uh, we had all the leaves loose, which was an excellent opportunity to make good uh, images for the digitization and for the exhibition on the website. As libraries and museums race to digitize our cultural heritage, organizations across Europe are responding with new technology. We're in Vienna. Beginning with an automatic page turner for musicians, 
Equidana's technologies turned its attention to inventing a scanner that would digitise books quickly without the need to cannibalise them. The company's robotic book scanner took a team of 50 engineers and technicians to develop. It will scan up to 2,000 pages an hour, entirely automatically, turning a book's pages by itself so they can be digitised and transferred to a database. Each book has different characteristics, especially concerning the quality of its paper. Turning pages can therefore cause technical difficulties. We have imitated the movement of the human finger and the human hand in order to turn different kinds of pages, pages of different qualities, thicknesses and weights. In High Low in the Netherlands, the digital revolution was the stimulus for picture or database publishing. Run by a former art teacher, Pictura scans thousands of photographs and documents a week for libraries and museums, including the newspaper collection of the National Library of the Netherlands. I think digitization is going to grow enormously uh, in the next couple of years because the very large institutes haven't done so much at the moment in Europe. So, well, everything has to be done still. And I think everything will be done eventually. So I think we get a lot of work, I hope. For most of us, libraries occupy a special place in our hearts. They have been both a source and a symbol of knowledge for millennia. But our traditional concept of a library is now being transformed. All revolutions create changes that are both exciting and unsettling at the same time. Digitization is no different. If you want to give people the opportunity to feel the historical sensation of seeing the real thing, like medieval manuscripts, uh, then I think digitization will never replace the original. I don't feel it as a destroyment of books or a cannibalization of books. It's just giving them a new life form. It's a second life for books. I'm convinced about that. You want to have virtual objects uh, at your possession, even though the actual artifact is at the opposite side of the world. In 10, 20 years from now, when a book is not digitized and available on the web, it won't exist at all.